and welcome to the most magical podcast where we give you tips and advice to visit the Disney parks like a pro, maximizing the magic by mastering the planning. I'm Sophie from Most Magical Guys, and I am so excited because today I'm joined by my friend Chris. How are you doing, Chris? Hi, Sophie. Well done on that intro and not stumbling over your words. That's yes. terrific. That was the most magical intro. So it was fun. amazing. That's the bit I get so stressed about because I'm like, oh my gosh, you're going to say it all in the wrong order. And plus the fact you have so many M's in one it's sentence. True. Like, I'd be like, no, bleh. Yeah, it's too many M's. That's a good point. But it's yeah. so exciting to talk to you. And we were very, very lucky that our last trip, we happened to both be in Disneyland Paris at the same time. So we got to meet up, which was so fantastic. Yes, meeting up with you and Peter and Sarah and Megan and Healy was by far the highlight of Karen's my trips. And obviously, Karen and Peter have met up and stuff. And hopefully, yes. one day our paths across and we'll be able to meet again in Disney in some way, shape, or form. Yes, I think that's one of the really, really nice things about the Disney community is that it's so lovely, it's so welcoming, and there's always a possibility people you know are going to be in the parks at the same time. So then that's even more magical because you can yeah. meet people that you know and experience yes. things with them, and it's so great. So I'm so, so glad we got to meet It's, up. it's also nice whenever it just flows you know like it's no no yeah. awkwardness you just talk about everything we met up so many times watched the parade from different angles yeah, so many exactly. different times as well you know went and you the that good spot. <laughs> and then you got like the water in your mouth as well like did anyone die from part of the Caribbean water oh my god the stress <laughs> <laughs> That must be a regular occurrence, but I'm always like, this is it, this is the end, this is the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it must be safe, but it feels very unhygienic. It doesn't smell the best, but yeah, uh, I'm true. sure it doesn't taste the best. I can't, yeah, exactly. I can't confirm or deny, you can. I, you it's know. so true. And I was just like, no, this is the end, this is happening. But <laughs> it's been amazing. But I thought today it would be really great to talk about adult trips to Disneyland Paris because I typically go on solo or trips with friends. And you, of course, go with your lovely partner, Karen. And it's nice to hear like a couple's perspective of visiting Disneyland Paris. So I think that'll be a really fun topic. Well, I will try and um, help out other couples who are maybe planning to go to Disneyland Paris for the first time. Everyone has to start somewhere, you know, yes. so, um, you know, but it, it's always a good fun. And I like you, I love the planning side of it as well, which we'll dive into later on, I'm sure. Yes, yes. And I think this is the thing. A lot of people, I think, think Disney's for families and that's who should be going. And particularly in the past kind of maybe 10 or so years, you've definitely seen a big, big rise in kind of like child free millennials. And I think Disney, I've always said, I think the Disney parks, like adults get more out of it because you go into this place and you don't hear any news from the outside world. All of your stress and worries goes away. But most importantly, there's such a message of optimism and joy and following your dreams. And I think those things can get bashed out of adults really easily. But to go there, you go and think, oh, my God, anything's possible. Whereas like kids, you have so much fun. It can be like long days, waiting in queues, like there can be things that are difficult for kids. Whereas I think if adults, when you choose to go, you just have the best time ever. <laughs> yeah, I've always said to Karen and I always firmly believe that Disney is a place where you leave your problems and everything from the outside at the gate and you pick them up sadly whenever you leave. Yes. But whenever you go in there, you know, like it's just you're in a different world. You yep. know, you try not to be on your phone as much, whether it's take, obviously we take photos and videos yep. of parades and things like that. But you're nowhere near on your phone as much. You'll notice that your mm. your usage just plummets and then you come yep. back home and then it goes back up again because you're constantly doing things, you know, to do with your Disney trip. But yep. yeah, I would I would say that you're 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 right in that aspect. Every time that Karen and I have been in November will be our fifth time going in a short space of time. But it's there's always something new there to do or some new restaurant or something that we haven't tried before. And that's something that we always try to incorporate into it is to try and do something that we've not done before. So this time will be the La Table de Lumiere, which we haven't done. So Amazing. we are actually going to be doing that the night we get there. So that's Perfect. going to be something something fun. Um, so Karen has already planned the lounge fly, the yes, shirt, the ears, it. everything. And I've yeah, Karen already... always looks immaculate. She looks incredible whenever she visits Disney. I love the theming and the matching. It's incredible. And then uh, I'll be doing the same with my shirt and my hat. Um, I actually got a Beauty and the Beast hat 
and then I have a shirt that has Lumiere and Cogsworth on it. So that will go well with that. So it will do. That's going to be so iconic. And I think that's the thing. There are so many things for adults to do at Disney. It's definitely not a situation where, oh, you can go, but you'll feel like an outsider sort of thing. And that's why I think today is going to be so perfect to talk about all of the things adults can do. So why don't we dive in with when was your first trip to Disney? Okay, well, I met Karen in, what, 2018, I want to say. Yes, 2018, because she'll be like, you know how long it is. <laughs> um, so in 2017, uh, before I met Karen, I was meant to go to uh, Philadelphia for a Philadelphia convention. And sadly, mm-hmm. my father passed away, so I never got to do that. So from 2014 to 2018 or 2019, um, so five years, uh, that was my first trip then in 2019. Uh, that was whenever we first went in 2020 we went the week before the pandemic wow. came around so That's if we wild. went a week later that wouldn't have happened no. you know um fair enough i think it was in that time that's when flyby collapsed and i had to try and find another way to get home and get another hotel oh, and that the, the day before yes and that was not fun but we got it all sorted and everything um and then went back then after the pandemic and 2023 for over my birthday and then March whenever we met up with you and then we're going in November because we had a cruise uh, already and then whenever we met you guys it was so much fun and we're like do you want to do that again and I've never been I've never ever had a week off in November because I work in retail so I've never ever and so in 18 well it's 20 plus years of working in retail so to go at Christmas time as well and yes. to see all the lights, to hear the music, to watch the parades, to see the shows, to try the food. This yep. is, again, going to be a first for us. And I think that the, the March trip, I'm not saying this because I'm talking to you, but the March trip was probably our favourite trip because of that. You and Peter played a massive, massive part in that. And again, I'm not just saying that because uh, I'm talking to you. Uh, you'll need to send me the money later. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it it's a case of, you know, like, meeting making new friends and stuff and having that we met you first of all in Disneyland Paris and it was the same with Sarah as yes. well and Haley and it was just nice to have that memory of I could always say the first time I met Sophie was in Disneyland Paris you know yes. and that can't be taken away no that's so true and like you say it's so lovely once you have friends that also love Disney or the things that I really love like you say it's when people you bump into them and you're like oh my gosh we get to hang out and meet in person because you tend to have spoken before maybe online yeah. mm-hmm. but to get to meet in person like you say to have that memory of the first time we met was in Disneyland Paris is so amazing and it definitely adds an extra dimension to the trip because like you say it's, you've made memories with other people as well which is so yeah. lovely Mm-hmm. and Peter and Karen are meeting yep. up on a regular basis and they're so having lovely. such fun which is nice to see as well yes. and Peter's a good Peter's a good soul fair enough he's awful at replying to messages but he gets yeah. there eventually I love it no it's so good and yeah that's the thing isn't it it's so lovely to kind of like because I met Peter through or we bumped into each other in Disneyland Paris like we'd messaged before mm-hmm. um, and same thing we happened to be there at the same time May I think it was 2020 two and um and then from then we've done multiple trips together and it's just lovely isn't it it's so good especially yeah, when it's people that get disney like people that don't yeah. get disney are just like why do you keep going and it's like you don't understand but we understand yeah. oh we do yes <laughs> very so much so cute. what do you think is the appeal for you to go to disney oh for, so i mean for us uh, as, a, as corny as a sign, Karen always says it's our happy place. You know, like yeah. that's where you go. And like I say, you forget everything outside. People like to go to Benidorm regularly. People like yeah. to go uh, to Italy regularly. People yeah. like to go to Australia. Everyone has their different thing. And for us, you know, like we've all grown up with Disney in one shape, way, shape or form with me. With It's funny because Karen and I have kind of switched. I yep. used to be more st- into Star Wars yep. and then kind of transitioned into Disney, whereas Karen it was more Disney and transitioned more into Star Wars. I love that. So, like, she, I'll say to her, what are you watching tonight? I'd be like, oh, I'm watching The Phantom Menace. And I'd be like, oh, I've got, like, Tarzan on or whatever. I love that. You know, like, so it's, it's funny the way that that is. Yep. And it's also fun as well to have a countdown to your trip, but plan your stuff as you, you well know, you know, like planning your, your you know, where you're going to eat you know like with us as soon as I book the trip that's whenever I book where we're going to eat 
yeah. um, because some places are so difficult to get bookings for. It's crazy, now, you it? know, like even it's so bad. Um, yeah. And then also have a what I like to do is have like a month and then have some movies to watch and mark them off, you know, so do yes. one a week. And then they're like, I've only got 10 more movies to watch until I go. That's a better way of looking at it. Like ten, then they would go in 10 more weeks. I've got 10 more movies to watch. That's such you a know. great countdown idea because that's something I need to be doing. Like when Avengers Campus opened at Disneyland Paris, at that point, I had not seen any Avengers films. Like superhero stuff had completely passed me by. And I was like, well, I'm going to start watching all of the Marvel films. And I'm still, I'm still doing it. <laughs> but it's actually really fun because like you say, it's something to do in the lead up to the trip and it builds the excitement. Yeah. And it's and then mm-hmm. when you're there, you're like, oh my God, I know who Doctor Strange is now because I've seen the yes. film, which is so yeah. fun. But that's such a good idea. I'm going to start doing that like a film a week. That's perfect. Yeah, because you just go, oh, I'm in the mood to watch this. I never got around to it. I'll add it on to next month. So I have like a list of like 10 or 12, like uh, Karen and I are going to see Inside Out 2 on Monday. Yeah. So then that'll be one then. Then I go, oh, well, that's a new one to add on to it then. And then add other ones right. on to it. You know, whenever she was over last, we watched Mary Poppins Returns, which I hadn't seen for ages, you know, yeah. and then it'll be a kiss of right. Well, let's watch Finding Nemo. I haven't watched for ages. But then yeah. I've tried to do it that I want to watch ones now to do with attractions in the park so i haven't That's seen snow white for ages so that'll do one then do yeah. peter pan also wonderland you know uh, but yeah with the marvel movies as well like i love watching obviously hulk is my favorite um avenger so i like to watch the movies with him in it yep. um and then they, they've all been done so i now need to watch go and watch the other spider-man movies again but they're always good fun to watch and then yes. you can pick and choose you don't necessarily need to watch Thor the Dark World which is yes. probably a lot of people's worst uh, Marvel yes. movie so you just pick and choose what you like to watch yeah exactly yeah that's the thing because when I was starting to get into Marvel it was that big thing of I was like do I watch them in the order they were released or should I watch them in the order that they come chronologically in the universe and everyone was like do the universe do the universe but then people were like oh certain films don't watch like after the end credits don't watch the extra scene because <laughs> you're gonna get spoiled. yeah mm-hmm. but I was like okay so I've got all the information <laughs> but I think the thing is they always release so many Marvel films and I also am trying to do like the tv series as well but obviously TV okay. films are so long. So then you're like, oh, yeah. gosh, if I like, if I just did the films, I could probably get through them quicker. <laughs> yeah, because some of the TV shows, like One Division, I think six episodes, whereas something like Falcon and Walter Soldier may be 10 episodes. And then you've yeah. got the new Dare- Daredevil one starting like yeah. next year. And then you've got the older one of that and Luke Cage. And there's so exactly. much stuff. And then if you want to watch Agents of Shield, that's like what, five series, that, like 20 exactly. odd episodes. Uh, but that, and again, it's the same with Star Wars. You know, some people have never watched Rebels or Clone yep. Wars. And they're, yep. for me, they're, uh, Clone Wars especially, the last like three episodes of that are just some of the best TV I've ever watched. And then yes. I will not watch Revenge. If I'm doing the Star Wars marathon, I will not watch Revenge of the Sith until I've watched those three episodes. Oh, that's perfect. You yeah, know, we should do a whole thing all about... Um like the order to watch Marvel, Star Wars and all of these things. I think what's interesting is when you first get into things, you don't really know where to start. And like, how many things do I need to watch? If I, if I watch just the films and miss the TV series, will I miss out? Which things are crucial? Like, it's so interesting to find out. I think it's so much different now from when it was, like, say, even like 10 years ago, because you only had the movies and now you have the TV shows, you have the animation, you yeah. have different animation, like the X-Men 97 is one of the best TV shows I've seen like from Marvel for quite some time. And if some people aren't X-Men fans, but it's just the writing, the voice acting, everything about it is superb. And then, but Star Wars, you've got so much more content there, you know, with Kenobi, with Soka, with Mandalorian, with Andor, with Acolyte. And it's just like, you're spoiled for choice. And it's, it's almost like you're at a buffet and you have one plate, but you have to put all, you're trying to put this all and trying to balance it all between yeah, your work so life true. and then other stuff. And you're like, what I, where'd I start? You know, yeah, it's and sometimes so it can be overwhelming, but yes. the best way to do it is do it the way you want to do it. Yep. You know, that's there, there is never a right or wrong way to watch movies or a TV show. And yes. however you want to do it is how you should do it. Yeah. And like I you said, you can always come back to things at a later time if you skip it. Yeah. You come back. And I think that's what's really nice now is obviously the past couple of years, Disney have 
had this massive expansion of adding Marvel and Star Wars. And it's really nice that those are also reflected in the parks. And I think it brings like a whole new audience. Like you say, people that were maybe never really into Disney, then, but have loved Star Wars, are like, oh, maybe I'll visit because I want to go on like, uh, like Star Tours or something like that. Avengers Campus looks really fun. You've got the Marvel Hotel. Like, it's great that you're bringing these new audiences in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. which is great yeah. and yeah i just absolutely love the, like i know some people are like oh like it's not so much disney but i think it brings such dimension to the parks and i just yeah think it's because so much fun. you could have somebody who's not necessarily into disney but like you say could be a marvel collector and have collected comics all the time and then they see avengers campus and we're like well that looks fun you know fair enough yep. it, it is it is tiny but whenever we first went we spent more time there than we did in the Disneyland Park because yeah. Karen loved Flight Force Stark Factory yep. is really good we've yet to try Pim so we're trying that the next trip and yeah. then obviously the Spider-Man web adventure is a workout for your arms so it's you amazing just, you know yeah it, it's almost like I think in like September time I'm going to have to stand in my room and go like this every yes, day exactly. so, so it doesn't ache so it doesn't ache whenever I come off go like oh <laughs> It's so true. The one thing I would have liked to have seen is obviously you've got the new Alice in Wonderland show, which looks mm-hmm. super, super fun. But but previously it used to be like a car stunt show. It was amazing. Yeah. And I thought because of its location, they were maybe going to do like a Marvel stunt show. And I think that would have been yeah. amazing if they'd done that. Yeah, because you have some of the stuff on the rooftop that you see yes. them fighting and stuff. So if they were to do that or even use that for the likes of, say, the, whenever the guard, whenever Star Lord and Gamora come out and they do like the dance off thing, you could yes. use that for multiple things, even it's so true. partition it up, and then you've got it for different little things. But yeah, the Alice in Wonderland show hasn't really sold me, to be honest with you. Yes. It's it's very it's very out there, but yeah. you know that's that's the thing is that Alice in Wonderland is very out there as that's well. That's true. You watch it's it, so true. You know, it is very out there. What I like about it is it feels very much like a Disneyland power show. Like you would not see that in the US parks. No. So it's kind of interesting to kind of, they have that. But where all of the other Alice Wonderland stuff is in Disneyland Park, it does feel weird. It's kind of just dropped into what yeah. was the US park. Yeah, that's that's because I always said to Karen that whenever the rumors were that they were going to do a Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland Park, I'm like, well, are they going to move Hyperspace Mountain and Starters over there? Because you've got two rides here and then you're going to have everything else over here. Yes. So would they move that over there yes. or what well, the latest, would they do? I don't know if you've heard the latest rumors, but again, these are just internet rumors, so it could be absolute nonsense. But apparently they are thinking about expanding the area behind Space Mountain and making that. It's not going to be like Galaxy's Edge per se, but it will be like a Star Wars land, which, like you said, would okay. make so much more sense because yeah. it's already in that area and it would fit seamlessly. And I think that would be so good. Yeah, it would be because then you obviously whenever you go down there, there's the much down there apart that filler magic. And then you yeah. had the old Pizza Planet restaurant yeah. on yep. way on up. So then they were meant to be making that a Star Wars themed restaurant. So if they open that up, then they could do that and then yes, have it all done. Perfect. And I think that's the thing as well. Like with obviously all ages enjoy Marvel and Star Wars, but the people that kind of have been into it the longest are the adults. And I find a lot actually that like the people I know that have kids when they go, especially if they do something like the heroes training center meet and greet mm-hmm. it's like the parents that are really excited to meet the superhero and the kids just kind of there <laughs> yeah and then but i think that's another thing like these franchises people have grown up with so again it makes sense that adults are drawn to visit these things because i think people bring their kids because they want to share their love with mm-hmm. them, with them but like it's definitely our age group that are like the big 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 fans of star wars of marvel and stuff like that so you've got this perfect combination now of things that even though they appeal to everyone there's a massive adult audience for them well one of my prized possessions behind me up here is a vinyl that is signed by mark hamill carrie fisher anthony daniels and peter mayhew luke skywalker princess leia c3po and chewbacca which i met in 2016 So that's one of my prized possessions that I got to meet Luke Skywalker and Prin- like Luke Skywalker, oh. Mark Hamill was wonderful. Princess Leia, less said the better. Oh, so no. uh, we'll just we'll just leave it at that. So it's the yeah, worst. that's one of my that's one of my prized possessions is that I've got to meet them and um, you know, and that's 
because that was my first memory of watching Star Wars was in the cinema whenever I was five with my father watching Return of the Jedi. So that's why. And that was even before I started collecting vinyl records. Yeah. So um, th that was a nice way to then years later kickstart collecting like the Disney, Marvel and Star Wars vinyls yes. as well. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? When you've been watching it like your whole life to now be able to kind of experience it and like meet characters in the park, mm -hmm. it's amazing because it really does have that like wow moment. And I know they're not the same people, but you do no. feel like, oh my God, it's but amazing. But whenever you go in, I'm not sure if it's the same, but whenever you go in to meet Vader, he's so intimidating. And you're yes, like, it's, so it's, just, it's just like, you know, like it's a Darth Vader friend. But whenever you go in, you're like, because there's a great photo I have of Karen and he's talking. And Karen's like, and looks really sad. And like, and it looks like she's been told off by the headmaster. It's so funny. Um, but but it, it's it's one of those things wherever you meet meet him. And it's just like every time we met him three or four times, yeah. every time I go in, he starts talking to you and you're like, oh, you know, it's, it's so just very, true. you know, it's so funny. It's so true. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? Like, it does bring that kind of childhood excitement out of you, which I think is wonderful. Because like we were saying, like, there's so many things to worry about these days. <laughs> But yes, Disney, there is. Yeah. And not only do you not worry about anything because you completely forget about everything, you also get that like wonder and excitement again. And it's such yeah. an amazing feeling. There's no better feeling than walking down Main Street, um, hearing the sounds, smelling the smells, and seeing the castle in front of you on a sunny day. And we were so lucky with the weather and our like being able to like yeah. take our jackets off and then go in the real way with you yes. as well which which was such fun um yes. and just things like that and obviously yeah. we're not going to have that luxury in november because it's going to be cold so yes. but we've got all that avenue all covered as well yes but i think christmas is such an amazing time to visit because there's nowhere more christmasy like i'm not a big christmas fan honestly but the one time that i really get into the christmas spirit is disney because it's just like, wow, this feels magical. It's mm -hmm. unlike anywhere else. It's so, I can't wait for you to experience it. Oh, nor can I, to be honest, nor can I. I was, I was thinking maybe we should talk about the hotels. Because I actually don't think on site there are any bad hotels. There are ones that would probably be my last pick. Like Sequoia Lodge, it just was a bit dated to me. And I know that they <laughs> refurbished it quite recently. But I'm just like, mm. out of all of them, it's the one I would skip over. But I think all of the hotels, there are definitely ones that I feel more adult. I think stuff like Newport Bay, obviously Disneyland Hotel, Art of Marvel do feel more adult. And the kind of value resorts feel super fun. But they're the ones I kind of stay in a lot because I do love the kind of theming. Like if I go to Disney, I want to feel like I'm in Disney. But yeah. mm -hmm. like... I think no matter where you stay, you're going to have a great time. And I know that you've stayed at the Art of Marvel Hotel. And that's like my dream hotel. Out of, out of all of the hotels, that's the one that's like top of my list. I think it's the most amazing. And it feels so sleek. It just looks amazing. So I was wondering if you could tell us about what it was like to stay there. One of the worst hotels. You definitely don't want to stay there, <laughs> Sophie. It's horrible. Just save your money. Yes. Go to Santa Fe instead. Do yourself a favor. Yes. No, Art of Marvel Hotel. We had looked into staying at maybe the Cheyenne and then going to the Disneyland Hotel whenever it opened up. Yeah. But the Disneyland Hotel was just way out of our price range. And seeing, yeah. you know, some people enjoy staying there and that's fine. But to me, it just didn't have that. It seemed to have lost that spark that it had before. Even walking in, it didn't have the great smell that it did. But Art of Marvel was just we were so well looked after the staff were amazing um we did like the marvel meets pretty much every day um mm -hmm. the obviously the restaurants there for breakfast were were lovely the concierge would you know bring your suitcases out whenever your private transfer arrives or whenever you're going um it's just it's it's one of those hotels like we'd stayed in Newport, but we've stayed at Cheyenne before, which yep. is lovely. I love the theming. Yep. I love the shop. The Red Garter Saloon is probably one of my favorite bars in yep. the entire Disney complex. Uh, Chuck Wagon Cafe. Chuck Wagon. Yes, yeah, Chuck Wagon Cafe. Yeah. Um, that is that, that was probably one of the best buffets we had before downtown. Yep. I'm salivating just thinking of the desserts yeah. and everything. <laughs> Sorry about yes. that. Um, but then we stayed at Newport Bay. And again, it was like uh, Karen got quite emotional whenever we went into the room because it was so big. Like yeah. those beds 
honestly, like after a long day at the park, it was like you were sleeping on a cloud. We yeah. were able to see the fireworks and then we moved to the, or the Marvel Hotel with the yeah. latest one. We were able to see the drones from there, which was magical. Amazing. I don't, I don't deal well. I could deal well with crowds, but I don't deal well with crowds all stuck together. Yeah. Um, yeah. That really, it, it just doesn't sit well with me. So yeah. I've yet to do the fireworks and drones because of that. I've said to Karen next time, I am more than happy to pay for her premiere access for her to go into the park and do that. But yep. it's more the going out, even after Stars and Parade, I yep. really struggled to try and get out because there's so many people there. Yes, exactly. um, yeah. Whereas if, I, if I'm if i able to move around, I'm fine. But whenever yep. it's all uh, and you can't move and you're like, where where'd yeah. you go, etc., that really just doesn't yeah, sit well with me. So to see the drones from the hotel room, which was lovely, um, every day we had uh, a member of the housekeeping come to our door asking if we needed anything. Mm-hmm. If we were out of the park, we would come in. They would do a turndown service. I brought Karen a Numeo, a Daisy Duck one, and I had a Donald Duck one. They would sit them on the bed. We would oh, get like a little, tin, a little tin, a little ton of um, Infinity Stone sweets. And like <laughs> whenever we actually came into the room, they give us lanyards, and we got some macaroons as well. Um, so they so look after you, even whenever we did the superhero meet, we met Captain Marvel and Karen was talking to the girl, Candace, I think her name was, and said, like, oh, Chris really wants to meet Black Widow. And she looked at the clock and went, maybe you stay a few minutes. And I was like, right. So we walked around, you know, like doing the different poses with the Iron Man boots and all that kind yes. of stuff. And then who comes out but Black Widow? And then oh, the last day, whenever, whenever I did the superhero meet in the park, uh, I met Black Widow. Karen was, um, she had something else to do, so she said, "You go on." And then I got to meet Black Widow by myself, which was lovely. So Not good. no shame to Karen or anything, yeah. you know. But um, <laughs> but yeah, the Marvel Hotel is the one we're staying at in November time, and it really does pay to book in advance because whenever I priced it up, if we were going now and doing everything, it was like eight hundred pounds more expensive. Yeah, so it's crazy, isn't it? it it's. And then um, Manhattan is one of my favorite restaurants, which we didn't get to eat at last time because yes. we decided to do some other things. So Karen's, I sacrificed Manhattan for downtown and then yep. Karen's done the same this time. Amazing. And I, because the min, minestrone soup in there, oh, it's one so of the best good. I've had. But yes. like I've said to you before, even whenever I go to sit down restaurants, I've yet to find a dessert that makes it a three on three. There's been so many places that I've had a really nice starter, really nice main course, and the dessert has just went, oh. Yeah, it's such a shame, isn't it? Because you're like, come on, we need the three. We need all Yeah, three. exactly, exactly. But I have yeah. to say, I think both the restaurants are great in um, Art of Marvel Hotel. And I think from your experience like i think whenever you look at the hotels you could possibly think oh okay you get a similar experience but you're paying for like the theming or the proximity to the parks but i, and I would say that's probably the case when it comes to like the santa fe cheyenne sequoia and newport bay but the level of service and like you say the turn down service the fact you get like sweets you get all of these extra things is like it's such a big jump i think from like yeah. newport to art of marvel and it's amazing. I think unless you know someone that stayed there, like you'd have no idea that you get all these extra things included. Mm-hmm. Newport Bay was was lovely. Um, the shop in there was great, but we didn't particularly. We're not fish lovers, so Captain yeah. Jacks and then the the two in there, we just didn't really um want to. We yeah. never dined in the restaurant there apart from breakfast. But with uh, with here, you know, like they do, they cater for everything. You know, the downtown is probably one. Of, it's such a busy buffet, and because yeah. whenever you book your hotel, you can book any restaurant on property hotel wise up to a year in advance, so they go Which like that. Yeah. Um, so. We were lucky to get um, a Manhattan uh, reservation. I just every so often I just go in just to check, like to see, yeah. you know, the reservation and be like, oh, there's one there, but it's ten forty five at night, and who wants to have a three course dinner at eleven oh, o'clock at night? True. No, it's not so me, true. not me. Unless you're like a really, really, really late starter, then that's yes. fine with you, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just a phenomenal hotel, and fair enough, you are paying a premium for it, but yeah. then again, you're. You're so close to the park after a long day. You're not having to walk, you know, like if Karen does the fireworks, she's got less to travel. She doesn't have to worry about getting on the bus and, you know, like being like London Underground where everyone says, hello, how are you today? You know, and everyone's squished together. So 
yeah, for me, for me, that's not just the best hotel I've stayed in Disneyland proper. It's the best hotel I've stayed in, period. Yeah. You know, like, it's just, it's they couldn't do enough for you. And it's nice to see. But that's what you want. And it's, they keep you coming back. The amount of times I've went, oh, I've lost my pen or my yeah. notepad. And the amount, of, you know, I give Peter like a notepad. Yes, pen, yes. And, you know, this time it'll be like, oh, I might get have to get Sophie a little one. Yeah. Then, <laughs> um, you know, so... But they did, they couldn't do enough for you. All the staff there were lovely. Um, even you know, like the Skyline Park. I'm not a drinker, whereas Karen is. So yeah. it's nice though that they cater for non-alcoholic people. Yeah. And you know, you can get a non-alcoholic drink there. So I'm not sitting there with a coke or a water. So and sure. it's it's just again, I bought the candle. Um because the smell in there, I, I love the smell in yeah. there more than I do the Disneyland Hotel. Fair enough, at Christmas time it, I'd be interested to see if they have the gingerbread house out yes. again. Yeah, that would be then That would elevate the smell. But yeah, it's just, it's the only thing I would say I would love it to be, if I could take from another place, would be the Cheyenne shop and put it in the Marvel shop. Obviously, it's all Marvel themed. Yeah. But if you're in the mood for like a packet of crisps or whatever, uh, sadly, they don't have anything there. So it's get it in the park before you bring it back, um, which is fine. No biggie there. But um you know, even swapping over, uh, Karen bought a spare jersey, but um, it was a bit too snug, so you wanted to change it. Effortless, not Amazing. you know, you know, looking at you, going like, oh, do I have to do this, etc. You know, and I, even like the first interaction I had getting my photo pass, somebody yeah. was there, and I went like, hello, and he went hello, hello in English, and he went, yep, and I, I said something, that, and he was telling me, oh, and I, yeah, you can book the superhero meets in here you've done it on the phone seven days before and then you know you could do this in the park and about you should work here instead of me you know what i do <laughs> I love you know that. And, and it's lovely to have that interaction you know like yeah. they're not robots you know and it's nice to talk to them and because they can't tip them the best advice i can give to you is if you're in a restaurant and you have twitter or x or x as it's called now or threads mm-hmm. do the hashtag cast compliment and then yeah. that way they can get you know, I've shown them many times of what I wrote and said yes. that or get their manager. People, yeah. people are very quick to complain, but not quick to compliment. Exactly that. And that's that something so that I like. There was two people we had at Waltz and Oberge de Sandrion, and they both had only been there a couple of weeks. And I spoke to their manager and said how good they were. And yes. as you leave, you can see the manager, you know, talking to them as if to say, good job, keep it up. Because yeah. if you're sitting there and you're saying this is wrong, that's wrong, this is wrong, then the morale is going to go. And Disney, I'm sure, is hard to work for and keep your end. Yeah. You'd be okay because you're always so bright and bubbly, <laughs> you know. Uh, um, so it just be, it's just nice to give them something back Million because they've percent. done their their do- job yes. well for you. And you can't, you know, it's yeah. it's not like America where you're like it's kind of it's the rule you have to tip. Yep. Whereas in France, it's the complete polar opposite. So it's it's nice to give a little back to them. That you know? is so true. And I know because I used to briefly work in the Disney store and it would, if you got a cast compliment, it would go on your official record and you'd get taken into the office. Although it's quite frightening because they'd be like, can you come to the office? <laughs> yeah, what, what it's done. always the case of, yeah, that's it. It's a, yeah. never, what have I done right? It's a, what have I done wrong? Exactly. You're like, what, oh, no. what have I done? Oh no, yeah. I had a like, really nice <laughs> comment from someone and you're like, oh, that's amazing. And it really makes your day. So like you say, if you have a great interaction it's so worth either like you say doing it on social media or speaking to a manager because it's going to make their day and it also goes on their record and kind of goes towards their you know they're mm-hmm. a really great employee which is amazing and I think that's the thing I like about the Art of Marble Hotel I'd say out of all of the hotels it's the most modern it's the most kind of adult feel like you say mm-hmm. there's two amazing restaurants two amazing bars like everything about it is top notch and the great thing is if you're not staying there you can still visit so you could book dinner reservations yeah. you could go to the bar go to the shop like there are things you can do but if we're staying there you get like you say that extra level of service and um, it's just so nice and i think a lot of people are starting to want to try out the disneyland hotel but i know we've said this before like to me i, I still think i would prefer the art of marvel hotel it just feels mm-hmm. more modern it's more like the style i like and um yeah it just looks next up incredible there's a little thing with the TV. That's the first yeah. TV that we've used because the TV doubles up as a mirror, which in itself is, I know yeah. Paige and Mr. Morrow went anyway. It's like, where's the TV? And yeah. I went, oh, it's here. Um, <laughs> yes. But there's a really unique feature where 
you can go in and you can tune your Spotify to your TV, but in the bathroom is a little Bluetooth speaker. And once you turn that on, it plays so you can listen to some Disney music while you're in the shower That's or so getting cool. yourself ready. And That's plus the fact that, plus the fact that there's two, I think there's two sinks. Yeah. Yeah, there is. There's two sinks as well. Yeah. And then they give Amazing. you this, they give you soap and they give you like a little vanity set and things like that. L- little mementos that are always nice to take. And then you get more of them and you're like, oh, I will take that. Yeah, exactly. you know, take like that. <laughs> and then you, you get like little postcards as well. Yeah. Um, You get like a little newspaper whenever you check in and it tells you what, like the, even the, the theming on the floors, whenever you go up, you know, like you, you're met with like um, an Iron Man portrait or a Hulk portrait. We were on the Guardians of the Galaxy floor. So even whenever you go down this corridor or this corridor at the end, there's more paint, there's more beautiful artwork. And that's the oh, thing is that if you're a fan of art or fan of Marvel covers, then that's just the place for you. It's just, you know, if you book Newport Bay, it's maybe four or five hundred pound, a bit more expensive than that. Yeah. And if you're a Marvel fan, it is it is worth it. If you're yeah. a fan of not walking very far to get to the park, it's an even better uh, hotel for yeah. you as well. But honestly, there's there there's nothing really I can fault with the hotel. Yeah. The only thing I would say is I wish that the Bleecker Street um, bar would be open longer because yeah. Cam was a bit um disappointed with their cocktails and skyline bar because yeah. they'd taken some away whereas bleaker street seems to have more variety and um yeah. so we feel like well we must try there then and you know like any excuse for karen to go and get that or or hot yes. chocolate or anything like that you know so yeah, but it's exactly. nice then that you can walk through the village go to earl of sandwich get something to eat there and then take it back to your hotel room because it's literally right right around the corner exactly. which we did a, a couple of times you know so yes. it's not a case of you can even spend a bit more there and then think right i'll not go i'll uh, I'll have a decent lunch and then I'll get like a McDonald's or something for a sports yeah. sports bar or um Earl of Sandwich and you can never go wrong, especially Earl of Sandwich is one of my favorite places to eat in the um in the Disney complex for like a quick bite to eat as well. Yes. But yeah, like you say, the location's amazing and like, like I said, I don't think there's any bad hotel, but if you're looking for something more adult, I think this is the way forward. Mm-hmm. Because it's just got everything you need. The level of service is amazing and like stuff like the skyline bar even though it is for everyone because it stays open quite late it's not yeah. as typical you're going to find lots of kids there so you can find these pockets of like adult only experiences even though it's a destination for everyone which is so nice mm-hmm. i would say that obviously downtown you find more kids there because you know they can get their pizza or their chicken yeah, exactly. the desserts there the desserts there you see, if at buffets and the opposite buffets, the desserts there are always amazing. Yeah, you know, with it, like the so royal funny. banquet and stuff. Yeah, um, the desserts there are amazing. Whereas Manhattan is more adult themed. Um, yeah. so if you're wanting to splurge a little bit, or you have the the um, uh, if you have the oh Dining my bar. goodness, yeah, the yeah. magic pass, then um, you can then use that, and yeah. you know you can get three courses there. Karen wanted to get the veil because that wasn't part of that. She just had to pay an extra five or six euros for that. Oh, so you can yes. still use that as well. And the veil was like, it wasn't like a little tiny thing. It yeah. was huge. And it was yes. very nice as well. But the chicken in there was was amazing as well. And that's why we decided then whenever we're going back, we could have done it a bit cheaper. But yeah. then we thought to ourselves, well, this is Christmas. You know, like this will be our Christmas that. present stage it. And we'll just thought, right, we'll do that as well. So yes, that's why I decided exactly. to go there. And that'll probably say, be a dis- that'll probably be one that we will say on site now if we're uh whenever if and when we're going back. So if whenever we go back, whenever the frozen lands open, yep. that's where we'll be staying again. Because yes. it's just it's just it's it's hard to once you get to that point, it's I suppose right. it's with people in Disneyland Hotel, it's very hard then to go from Disneyland Hotel to Santa Fe. You know, yep. it's the same kind of thing, but it's not, there's not all the bells and whistles that you expected yep. from wherever you were there anyway. Yes, no, it's true. Well, yeah, I totally agree. Manhattan's one of my absolute favourite restaurants in Disneyland Paris. Like, the food there's always been really good. Like, I'm vegan. The vegan options are amazing. Like, there's a really creamy pasta, which 
typically you think vegan things are going to be like tomato based but the fact they have yeah. this unbelievably creamy pasta is so good and like you say i think it is hard once you've kind of got used to a hotel and like the level of service and everything there mm-hmm. it's so hard to go back but i do think if you are people that are going to be going to Disneyland paris and you're more conscious of your budget then you can't really go wrong with the santa fe or cheyenne because even though i would say they are more family friendly because of the theming a lot of my trips I go on, I stay there, but it's still very, very quiet. It's very peaceful. It's not like you're going to be like, there's going to be kids running up and down the corridor screaming and stuff like that. I've always been super impressed that yeah, even though they are big resorts, they still feel very quiet, calm. So I would say if you're visiting, look at your budget. If you have the budget, Art of Marvel is the way forward, I think. Mm-hmm. And it, it yeah. looks next level. And like I say, it's that it's not just the fact that it's close to the parks, like the, the extra amenities, everything you're getting is next level compared to the other hotels. But um, yeah, there is lots of variety on site and it's definitely worth checking the hotels because sometimes the price of the hotels depends on how many people are in the room, uh, how many people have already booked. So I've been before where like Newport Bay is cheaper than Cheyenne. So it's definitely worth always checking yeah. with the hotel oh, yeah, yeah. because you can get mm-hmm. like amazing prices. And the one good thing, if you're doing adult trips and you don't maybe work in education, you're not tied to school holidays, is you can go in the off seasons and get the really, really good deals. Because that's how I always visit. Like I never, ever had an annual pass. It was only because the last two trips I did were with Peter and he booked the rooms with his annual pass. And I was like, oh, it'd be better for me to buy an annual pass than tickets. But mm-hmm. otherwise, because I visit in the off season always get incredible deals and like even next year like for my birthday i've never been on my actual birthday because it's in the like beginning of january and it's like no one has any money it's what is your birthday it's the ninth so it's like you, you're hard. kidding yes Mine's the 10th no way that's so funny <laughs> that's amazing it's so difficult isn't it because that time of year like everyone's like so burnt out from all of the christmas and new year things yeah Mm-hmm. everyone's got no money it's a like long um gap between payday because it's a long month but I was like this year we're gonna do it so I'm going with my best friend but we've got Newport Bay and it was I think it was 380 pounds each and that was for three nights four days and it's like so cheap you can absolutely do it cheap if oh yeah off season and I'm like mm-hmm. this is the way forward like I think everyone thinks automatically it's going to be really really expensive but if you can go between kind of like November and March and not obviously over Christmas and New Year you can get some really amazing deals yeah, yeah. And uh, hopefully Newport, but whenever I went, sadly they had no birthday buttons. So I didn't get a birthday yeah, button. It's the worst, isn't it? You're like, God. And I was just like, I was just like, oh, it's like I'm 46, but it's, it's fine. Yeah, fine, exactly. Whatever. It's you fine. Know, it's but, completely uh, yeah, really I'd be so but, upset. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it is magical that they be there on your birthday. And I think, again, it, it was this year. It was like, I was, and then on your birthday, it's like, I was in Disney and Paris on my birthday last year. And it's like, yes! but you'll have an amazing time. Funny that your birthday is the ninth, mine's the tenth, and my mum's yeah. is actually the eleventh of January. That's so, funny, so isn't it? It's, it's so weird as well. Yes, so it is, but that's amazing. But yeah, but, but Newport Bay is just what it's a lovely hotel, and I yeah. can't really. I love the character meets in there yes, as well. Yes. We've yet to get. We whenever we stayed there originally, we were going to meet Mickey, and then yeah. we'll, we'll get him later on. And then the four nights we were there, Goofy was there twice, and Pluto was there twice. So it's like there was no Mickey. So yes. now every so often we'll like walk around and see you know what the character is as we're walking back and it's just Mm -hmm. Karen adores the new like I love the Newport Bay shop as well and they have some nice mementos there like the little little pins the coins now I love collecting and um got one from the Disneyland Hotel and Newport Bay on our last trip as well but it's just like a really handy lovely uh, the only thing that's not good is whenever you're traveling back and then you've got the big stairs to yes. go up to. Um, <laughs> it's and it's just like, oh, no, there's more stairs. It's but so it's, true. It's, it's so well said. I, it, like you say, all the all the hotels are very quiet. If you have yeah. to be disturbed by little yes. darlings running up and yes. down the hallways or whatever. Um, it's so, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? Because I was, you just don't expect that. <laughs> no you don't you expect like you know six o'clock in the morning to hear kids up and about yes. and never but then you're up about too because that's you true get your breakfast <laughs> head over to uh, magic hours and stuff yeah so yeah it's just um i hope you have a, a blast then it's weird that yes. i'm going november you're going january as yes. well so um so but good. that's fun that's fun 
but yeah i loved this is a weird thing to love but i really loved the carpet in newport Bay, <laughs> which is a weird thing yeah yeah it was so good nice. but it's worth noting like you say all of the hotels like um newport bay santa fe stuff like that you anyone could go to the hotels and meet the characters and they're in their costumes mm-hmm. in the hotel but again with the art of marble hotel that character meet is exclusive for hotel guests which i think is really nice it's an extra incentive if you love marble to stay there yeah very much like the disneyland hotel some of the yep. princess meets are exclusive there as well yeah and it's super ha- it's super easy to book i was like how do i do this and then it just comes up you yep. p- it's very much like booking your dining you just pick a time whenever you just take a screenshot of it because 90 percent of the time i went my phone would not go into the app would not load it up or the person mm-hmm. would just go yeah go on ahead so then you would just go around the corner and then you would see who it was so yeah. the likes of star lord is one who doesn't necessarily meet in the park so we got him the yeah. first one i got i was wearing my marvel shirt and he's pointing at it going like why am i not here and it's like i love that but yeah you know, but <laughs> um we got to meet him got to meet him dr strange captain marvel and black widow yeah. there um which was really good and then obviously you can do the same kind of thing in the parks yeah. um which is good fun the spider-man meet there is probably one of the best marvel meets you can get although ant-man in the park would be my second favorite yeah. because he was really good uh, whenever I had the same shirt on, he noticed himself on and we just had really good chat and everything. Just, you know, like, and that's one thing about the shirts, you know, like if you're wearing something for that character, they can kind of notice it. That's why with the princesses, the, they were all on the shirt, you know, like, so we were able right. to point and go like, oh, that's me. Oh, and that's lovely. Blah, you know, and uh, so it's nice to do that as well. So, yeah. but yeah, the, the Marvel meet is, you, you know, you, I think they go up to I think they go up to the evening time, but it does rotate. But in there you do have like like a lot of artifacts to do with the Marvel universe. So you have like a kind of Doctor Strange wall where it looks like you're in his world. You have Amazing. Thor's hammer, you have Spider Man's room where you're on the floor, and then obviously you turn it upside down and it looks like you're on the ceiling. You've yeah. Iron Man's boots, which Karen thought were snazzy, and then you've got the um big vault thing from one of the guardians films where the collector houses his um collect collectibles in um so you've got plenty of there to do and again like you said there was more adults in there than there was kids you get the odd kid here or two you know there's one that captain marvel said what would your superhero be or be and i'm a really good chef and just everyone started laughing you know you can just imagine go i'm going to cook you to death you know, yeah, exactly. So that's amazing. It's so good. Well, I suppose because we've touched upon dining, we might as well talk about dining. And, and again, Disneyland is made for everyone. So there's no restaurants that I would say you're going to find like only adults. But there, I think there are some restaurants where maybe the cuisine is a bit more aimed towards an adult taste. There's somewhere like Bistro Chez Remy because it is a very French menu. If you've got little ones, they do, of course, have kids' menus. But if they're maybe not adventurous eaters, stuff like that, or even Captain Jack's aren't going to be, like, the best option. Because, mm. you know, if they don't kind of want to try different flavours, or even, in fact, now something I love is some of the quick service restaurants have got these menus that are kind of reflective of the lands that they're in. So, like, Restaurant Hakuna Matata, or, like, the new menu for Colonel Hathi's. And I like that they have, like, um, African flavours or Indian flavours. But I suppose... If you're not particularly an adventurous eater, if you're traveling with people, maybe th- like there are other places you would pick. But um, I think some of the restaurants are more adult in feel. So somewhere like Waltz, because it feels very grown up in there. Mm-hmm. It, like, although the, the cuisine is something I think most people would like. Um, uh, did you not enjoy yeah. Waltz? Sadly, I have to say, yeah. Waltz is probably one of my worst dining experiences yes. in Disneyland Paris yeah. I had cold sweet corn and popcorn soup oh. the chicken was nice the hottest thing I had was my dessert which was a pineapple upside down cake yeah. um, they were great with Karen the Karen ordered the chili con carne and she didn't like it and they swapped it the theming is wonderful if you're at the window you can see the parade yes. but for us oh, sadly God. that was one of my highly anticipated restaurants Yep. And I was really disappointed by it. Nothing to do with the sir the service. Yeah. Service was great. But then we went to O'Birds the day after and oh that yep. was that was again Sally. The the starter, the 
pumpkin soup, I think it was, was lovely. Yeah. The beef was, uh, you didn't need a knife. You just went like that and it fell off. And it was lovely. But like you say, there's so many places like Bistro Cher Ami, It's wonderful to yeah. to go on the ride and then go into the restaurant once yeah. you have a booking. Because, again, that is one that gets booked up so, so quickly. 100%. Um, it's so hard to get. Like, luckily, we have one for the last our last day. And yeah. that would be something that if I wasn't able to get, I kind of be a bit, um, bit devastated at. You know, yeah. because this is something that we've been going to for years and it's always such lovely. Like the steak in there is phenomenal. Yeah. I really like the pumpkin soup in there as well. The Again, the Karen with her being a drinker, she likes the wine in there yeah. as well. But it's just a really nice setting. You know, it's very unique in the fact yeah. that, you know, you basically are shrunk down the size of a rat. You can then have like the tree lights. You have plates as, you know, the back of the so booth. Cool. You know, it's just it's so, so well done. And just to see people coming off the ride and things like that. Again, the service has always been very good in there. Yep. Um, one thing I would say is that a little hidden gem that I find, well, I can't remember who it was from, but is that you can ask the chef to sign a napkin for you. Um, so whenever they do that, you know, like we've had a couple signed by Chez Remy, the other one. The last one, which is actually on my Instagram, um, it says, you know, thank you for signing the share with me. Hope to see you back again soon. And the chef has signed it. So okay. that's a nice memento from that evening because we actually got two for the girls in, next to us um, who were, I think, American and they didn't yes. know about it. And then we got them for them. And they were like, oh, that's really lovely. Thank oh, you. And lovely. again, nice. it's 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 spread in that bit of Disney magic. But yeah, share me is lovely. Oh, Burj Sanrian, obviously, I've always said, and I've said to you, that is the premier access for meeting princesses. Yep. Instead of spending two to three hours in the Prince's yeah, Pavilion, exactly. pay I've, either for the breakfast, which is back now, which we have booked. Karen yep. was like, can we do? I don't. I think the Plaza Gardens is very chaotic and yep. very rushed. Yep. Um, the food in there is just the same as any other breakfast place uh, for me. Yep. And the characters seem to be the same kind of ones all the time you know now you've got Shmi, Hook, Tigger, Eeyore, Pinocchio and Geppetto whereas yeah. before you would have like Mickey, Minnie and I understand that you know they're elsewhere now um, but with them with the princess breakfast it's a lot even though you've got that that is very kid oriented because some kids want to meet the princesses yeah. you know and that's fine you know we're big kids at heart so we want to meet the princesses yeah. too um but the dining in there is really really nice the mm -hmm. lunch in there is superb and the royal banquet even though that's 100 euros per person again you can use your dining pass for and i think yeah. it works out you have to pay half you have to pay right. 50 Perfect. but the character meet in there is top notch that is some of the best character actions i've had with with all of the fab four we've actually booked to do the dinner because we haven't met goofy or pluto so the lunch you have mickey mini donald daisy and yep. the evening you have mickey mini goofy pluto uh, which i thought they would have done the other way around i thought that goofy yes, and pluto yeah. would have been, or donald daisy would have been more because they've only just opened that up because it yeah. was more for the residents of Disneyland Hotel, and yeah. now anyone can book it. La Table de Lumiere is kind of one of those ones that you can either, I think, go to City Hall or yeah. uh, or you can ask your your uh, uh, your concierge and ask them if they have any tables available for that. There was yeah. a little loophole that I managed to get mine in, which I'm not willing to divulge, yeah. uh, but my <laughs> booking is still there, so that was fine. Uh, but yeah, I, I think... I think Disney and Paris get a lot of unnecessary hatred for their food. Uh, apart from Walt, uh, I mean, it was edible, but I wouldn't say uh, it didn't get me to go rush back like Chez Remy or right. Manhattan yeah. or, um, uh, you know, like or Royal Banquet does. Royal yeah. Banquet seems to change it up so often. You know, once we had steak the other day, day we had veal, you know, like so yeah. there is differences there. Yeah. But there's never been anywhere that we've went to that we've went that's truly awful you know right. I, yes. I actually yeah. i actually think that casey's corner if you love hot dogs sports bar outside on disney village i think in my opinion does better hot dogs than casey yes. corner does yeah. and you actually are able to get a seat there too yes. yeah. but but it's yeah. all about pref it's all about personal preference yeah what 
I may like somebody else. Somebody else may yeah. go, oh, I didn't rate Shamer May. I thought Waltz was better. And that's yeah. fine. You know, like we're all, it would be pretty boring if we all like the same no, thing so and true. all got on that way. You know, like, so yes. again, this is just from my perspective yeah. from, from dining there. Um, yeah. But we have all the dining book that was done whenever I booked everything. And uh, I was like, right, I need to get the dining sorted because the longer you leave it, then yep. you can miss out on your favorite restaurant. Like True. Chez Remy, if I wanted to do that now, I wouldn't have got I would have been able to get a table. But I don't really fancy a steak lunch at 11 o'clock in the morning. No, it's true. So. It's so true. And I think that's the thing that I would say something that comes up a lot is the food at Disneyland Paris. Because like you said, I think there are definitely places where you go, oh, you wouldn't think this is theme park food. And it's impressive. And I think there are other cases where it's like, oh, this is kind of typical. Better. Particularly because France is so passionate about its food. And I think one of the downsides is a lot of the food at Disneyland Paris is prepared off-site and then brought in mm. heated. So I know for someone like me who has dietary requirements, it can be, it's not challenging because there are options in a lot of places, but if you needed to make accommodations, most restaurants won't make any accommodations and a lot of the chefs don't even know what's in the food. So if you ask, they don't necessarily know, which can be worrisome. And I've had it before, mm-hmm. I've been given the wrong information and then been given food I can't eat and have been made ill. So always check the allergy menu. That's my top tip. If you have any dietary requirements. Uh, funny enough, I had to say that to my niece. My niece, yes. uh, she's she can't eat anything gluten. So whenever she went yeah. there with her boyfriend, I was like, they will ask you, do yeah. you have any dietary requirements? I went, but this will only be at restaurants you sit down at. They yeah. won't really ask that at a quick service. Yeah. If you go or, order a burger, you know, that's yeah. like somebody saying, going into Nando's and saying, Oh, I didn't want chicken. It's like, oh, that's what yeah. we sell is chicken, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but like you say, it's important if you have any dietary requirements to ask that. Um, yeah. They will ask you if it's a sit down or a buffet restaurant. But if it's a quick service restaurant, I don't think they ask you, which is no, um, something that the a, cashier should. Yeah. Yes, they will always have an allergen menu at all the restaurants that you can check. But I would say there is a big difference because obviously it's also a cultural thing. So I don't think in France they're so on on top of like allergies or um intolerances or dietary requirements say say you go to like disney world they have Mm -hmm. the information a chef will come out and speak to you and let you know exactly what's safe for you to eat and if there isn't anything they'll make something specifically for you whereas in disneyland paris like there's like i said there's going to be no accommodations really (laughs) and like it's it's running the risk of being given the wrong so like for me personally i don't really ever eat in the buffets now because i had a terrible experience at pim kitchen um where i was given the wrong information and then i was ill for the rest of my trip and it's just a thing of like you can't risk it and also their reaction was very they did not care i actually i complained to the restaurant they didn't care they charged me for the food even though they gave me stuff i couldn't eat and it made me ill. <laughs> um, I complained to guest services, and she said, if you really um, had a problem, you wouldn't have even eaten our food, you'd bring your own, which I think is not an acceptable answer. And <sighs> then I spent five weeks arguing with them over email about it, because like, I have an intolerance to dairy, so it'll make me ill, but, you know, it's not terrible. But dairy is one of those things that people die from, and I was like, you mm-hmm. can't be, you've got to take this serious. And that's why I was emailing them, I was like, oh, you just need to be serious about this, because you can't, um... or oh, like you say, I I know people that have got celiac disease and they've been given gluten and then they've been ill yeah. since their trip and it's like but you could hospitalize someone and you have to take mm-hmm. it seriously so that's the mm-hmm. one thing like I think for me where I'm like I wish the food was a bit more like to the US standard where we're going to take it seriously yeah it, like because it's the stress of if you don't have any dietary requirements or like not even dietary requirements, because if you're vegan, vegetarian stuff, there's options for you, it's fine. But if you've got more like allergies or intolerances, that's where it can be a bit more, because obviously you're always on high alert. <laughs> and yeah. it's just like, like you say, the fact that they've got the allergy menus is perfect because you know that's going to be the correct information. And because a lot of it is cooked off of site, it's going to be the same stuff. It's not like an ingredient's going to have slipped in. So it's like safe. But that's the one area that I'm like, I wish they would kind of maybe be a bit more like proactive in updating their skills because it's just yeah yeah because there was that tiktok that went viral of the woman in the disneyland hotel wherever that happened and yeah. they were very blasé about it and she was like you know i you know if it's a nut allergy and then somebody's yeah. given that you know like yes, yeah. god forbid their throat yes. swells up you know and yeah. things like that so yeah, yeah. I'm, 
I'm thankful in a way that I don't have any, but then yes, for yeah. the likes of you, it's more you have to stick to what you know. If something new comes yeah. out, it's like you have to kind of assess the menu and go like, right, does it have X, Y, or Z yes. on it? Yeah. You know, I have a, I have a very my skin can flare up with certain yeah. things so i yeah. have to be i have to bring my own tiles with me because right. if i use the, their tiles on my face my face could go you know yeah. like or if yeah. i i can't use anything with parfum so i have to bring my own toiletries so yeah. if they were to bin that and then i have to use theirs then there's right. a good chance that i could flare flare yes. up because yeah. of that so again you know bringing your own food that's fine but at, at the same time you're at a you're at a you had a place where for if you go with an all-inclusive holiday, you don't expect then to go, oh, I'll just bring my own food, even though it's all inclusive, you know, yeah. but um, that's that's a bit wrong. So yeah. I'm glad that you got sorted in the long run, but it's, yes. it's yeah. more the hassle of because it's spoiling that trip. And then it's like, do I go back because of that? Because I've yes. had that bad experience. Yeah. And and that's the same in any restaurant. If you had a bad experience, you don't go yeah. back. You no, know, it's true. So, it's so true. You know, the thing, so. like I say, with, with vegan options, it's actually a lot now, which is great. So you could go and easily eat, and it not be a problem. But for me, it's just the buffets because they don't really mark what's vegan, and especially if you have something like you can't have gluten, they definitely don't mark that. Um, but when I arrived, they said, "Do you have any allergies?" I said, "Oh no, I'm vegan." Like you know, but I know you have options, and they were like, "Fine." But there was nothing really marked on the um buffet so I asked the chef like oh these vegetables are they say for vegans and he was like oh I think so but I'll check outside with another chef and then he was like yeah it's all safe and then eating away and then one thing had blue cheese in it because it's really distinctive right and I was like oh my god mm-hmm. that's definitely so I spoke to the waitress and she was like oh all of that has dairy in and I was like what so we checked the allergen menu and the stress of it but that's why now with buffets I'm like if I did go to a buffet I would always check the allergen menu because I know that's going to be the correct information yeah than the chefs because like I said where it's prepared off site they don't really know what's in the food so it does make sense but obviously what they should do is check the allergy menu rather than just go yeah that'll be fine <laughs> because mm-hmm. like, if it's like nuts or something or even dairy you know where, where people die from these things it's it's scary to think but that the- you're asking for the information and if you get the wrong thing it could be so life-threatening yeah it's scary with the likes of buffets you have different yeah. sections yeah take away some things and go you know here's your burgers here's your pasta here's your desserts here's your vegan stuff you know like and have that clearly labeled all you need to do is write what it is and on the other side of it write what's in it you know uh, it takes no time at all it's very much like whenever we went there in january they had no fudge and because we thought that was on and then we're like oh yeah there's a problem with the supplier it's like oh that's put in fudge I was like, oh, that yeah. kind of ruined it a, a yes, little yeah. bit, you know. Yeah. Yes. Um, but we got some this time. Uh, and to be honest with you, I kind of was like, oh, wasn't this yeah, nice. Now you know. I loved like, it. Oh, and I yeah. was just like, oh, wasn't as nice yes. as I remember, you know, yes. which is No, it's so true. Sad. It's so true, isn't it? Because you're like, oh, I thought it was made here, which is such a shame. But yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Something else that would be interesting to talk about is that, look, I think that the, one of the great things about Disney is that all rides are suitable for kind of everyone. But obviously, apart from like little kids, obviously, you can't be going on Space Mountain because of the height requirement. But if you're an yeah. adult, I feel like there's no rides that are off bounds. It's not like there are some like that are kid rides that really you shouldn't be going on. Like, I will go on Casey Jr. <laughs> which is just like it's just joyful and I think that's what's really nice is that if you love thrills there's stuff for you but if you don't you don't have to go on like the adult rides you could go on the carousel you could be going on the 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 train around the park there's shows there's so much to do and then I I feel like as an adult you can visit anywhere you want it's not like if you're an adult you should be doing the thrill rides and that's it like if you want to meet the characters go and do that if you want to just watch shows and people watch you can do that and that's something i really love about disney is that you can customize it to the things you like yes um you've just hit the nail on the head i'm not a great thrill seeker whereas karen yeah. is obviously whenever we were there big thunder mountain was down and karen was the first person to go on it whenever which it reopened so cool. which was which is like she was made up you know, I'm a faster walker than Karen, so I technically I was there first. Not yeah, Karen, you I know, love that. because I was I was like I'll go first. You know, but like like you say, you know, like she loves Big Thunder Mountain. She prefers Flight Force now over Hyperspace Mountain. She finds Hyperspace Mountain a bit of a chore. She loathes the Indiana Jones ride. She said like she's never been battered around that much. You yes. know, because her head just goes like this. Yeah. Whereas you know, like we love going. You know, like 
it wasn't until probably January that I expanded going on rides. I would went, whenever I first went on starters, I was like, I don't know what to expect from this. I went on, I was like, oh, that was fun. I went on it again. I was like, oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, it's like, you know, I, I, and now we don't go on it um, because yeah. it, it is one of those ones that it doesn't seem as smooth as other rides. Like I adore yeah. Phantom Manor as much yes. as you, you know, like, yes. and that was one thing whenever we met, you had your Phantom Manor um, yes. spirit jersey on and I was like, oh, I love Phantom Manor. And that's yeah. always whenever we were there, they, that was meant to be down next, they moved the refer to the next week. And I was I'm like, so oh, lucky. Yes. And I was yes. like, thank goodness for that. You know, so we love going to Phantom Manor together, Pirates. Um, I quite like the Pinocchio ride. Peter yes. Pan, I don't get why it's always like 45 minutes. I really yes. don't. It's so funny, um, isn't it? It's one of the most popular rides in every Disney park. But yeah, it, it is charming. But you're like, it doesn't deserve an hour long queue. It's crazy. It's one of those ones that if you sneeze, you've missed it. Yeah, it's, it's so it's short. Like, like that, you know. Um, it's it's so a small good. world. It's a small yeah. world. It is so lovely. And yes. well, probably probably one of the longest rides that yeah. isn't like a thrill ride. You know, like it yes. just keeps going. And it's not a song that really irritates me as I th- no. much as I thought it would. Yes. You know, but you have... The Ratatouille ride is probably one of Karen's my favorite ride. Yep. I just love that. I love the fact with certain rides with like Premier Access, you can then skip it. You know, yep. like so if we've we'll go on at once, we like to go on at once before we go to the restaurant, like I said before, you yep. know, together. But then if it's single rider, it's five minutes. Well, we might as well Perfect. do it separately. And that's yep. the great thing is that, you know, so she adores Crush's Coaster. So again, yep. do we spend the extra 13 euros on that yeah. rather than her waiting 70 minutes on it of course exactly. we do the that's re- the thing the first time- i think crush's coaster is one ride that absolutely premier access is 100 percent worth it yeah mm-hmm. i always say with premier access if, there, if there's a ride that you absolutely cannot miss then it's worth it but crush's coaster is the one where i'm like 100 percent of the time it's always worth it because like you say even the single rider queue can be like 50 minutes long yes so mm-hmm. the fact that you can get on it instantly and and like you were saying the great thing is if you are traveling with people and like some people like thrills and other people don't because there's quite a lot of single rider queues that can be perfect because then it means you're not having to wait loads of time on your own yeah. you know, there are things that you could pop into shops or meet a character there's something to do but like um the, the single rider queues are so fantastic if you're doing solo trips or if you're like two people but you don't mind going separately or if you're one person that wants to ride with someone who doesn't and i love that Disney Paris have quite a few single rider queues mm-hmm. I, whenever karen did crush's coaster in 2019 it was the season of the force and the frozen yep. experience and whenever she was there i was able to go and watch the season of the Force show in its entirety, Amazing. and she still hadn't. She still hadn't <laughs> made it to the front, and she went. <laughs> so These wild. seagulls are doing my head in because oh, honestly, kept hearing mine, mine, no, mine, mine. No. I honestly don't know how cast members work in there. I could, <laughs> I couldn't. I absolutely couldn't. <laughs> I think it's one of those things. After a period of time, you just block out. You know, what, I, I'm sure that Fernando Nemo was probably one of their least favorite movies. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's just nice to have that. You know, she wants me to go on Big Thunder. And I was like, look, I'll see how I go. If I feel up to it, I will. But that's yep. a good thing is she doesn't like, you know, like you're coming. You yep, know, like exactly. whenever I went on it, I was holding her bag. Whenever Peter then came across, I'm like, give me your bag. I was like, what? And I give me your bag. Karen's yeah. on there. And then the two of you go on together. So I was holding my bag, Peter's bag and Karen's bag. I love it. So, you know, <laughs> I was just and they're going, oh, great. Um, but yeah, it, it's just nice. And it's nice that yep. I just wish that some of the... Uh, smaller rides say like uh say like web uh adventure even yep. ratatouille um and say like, that they had photo passes you know yes, because yes. there's very like phantom manor would have been a great one as well to have yes. a photo pass Especially and sadly in the u.s they... parks you do get a photo yeah. well, at least in disney world you do and it's like oh yeah. it's great to have one here but with the likes of, say, Pirates of the Caribbean, that's yeah. the, one of the very few rides that Karen and I go on together that yeah. we'll get a photo of. You know, like, fair enough, there's one of Peter and her on Big Thunder Mountain, yeah. or there's several hundred of her on Big Thunder. Or Buzz Lightyear, yeah. sorry, that's another one that we would get, yeah. uh, which she hates going on because she is dreadful at Pirates. Yeah. She's better <laughs> at Web it. Slingers, but when yeah. we first went on that, she... It's like, ha, I beat you. And then there was another bit. And I was like, no, you didn't. And then yeah. I beat her. And <laughs> I, I was like, as Han Solo once said, great kid, don't get cocky. So yeah, now exactly. she doesn't. So, I love so. that. 
<laughs> that's so funny but yeah i think it's so nice there's a variety of rides and i also love the shows at disneyland paris and again i don't think there's any like ones that adults aren't welcome to like so basically there's one i'm obsessed with called disney junior dream factory <laughs> and i ended up going in there i went one year and it was january it was minus three outside and i was like okay well this show's starting soon i'm gonna go in just so it's indoors yeah. And I was blown away. I didn't know any of these characters because obviously I watched Disney Junior. But mm. the show is amazing. It's so uplifting. There's so many cool like special effects. Mickey and Minnie are in it. The songs are really catchy. And I think it's one of those things that you think, oh, Disney Junior, you have to have kids to to enjoy it, to go into it. But again, Disney make it so that everyone can enjoy the show. So it's not i think it's one of those things that don't feel like you are unwelcome anywhere in disneyland paris yeah. you're going to be welcome like i say character meet and greets adults can absolutely do them like you said if you want to be skipping the queue do a character dining meal and you will have an amazing time and the characters give you just as much attention and mm-hmm. i've even done um character dining meals solo in disneyland paris and they still like they go above and beyond to make you feel yeah. welcome Mm-hmm. It's, i think there's nothing that you should skip over like if there's something you think i oh, want to try that absolutely do it because you're going to be welcomed and you're going to enjoy it yeah because like you say with the shows sadly we never got to see the together show whenever we were there and we've yet to watch yeah. that mickey and the magician and the filler magic we yes. were going to do this time but then it was down for refurb yeah but the lion king one was the one we did on our first yeah. trip we did the lion king experience which we were able to get that the show meet safari mini have a cup with a specially cocktail, non-alcoholic cocktail in it, and have a thing in a Kuna Matata, which wasn't nice. But that show, I'm I'm a, can be quite an emotional p- person, yeah. and music is the thing that will trigger me. 100%. If I'm watching, yeah. if I'm watching Force Awakens, I know at the end I'm going to probably tear up because of the yeah. music, and yeah. that was no exception. I think three or four times I was just in bits. You yeah. know, but it's so well done, so well choreographed. It's yeah. one of those ones that whenever it first came out, there was like a two hour wait and it was in blistering heat. We were able to just walk up, walk in, away we go. Yeah. And it's one that, again, we've been meaning to go back to. But you know what it's like yourself. You make all these plans. And then once you're 100%. there, it's like, oh, there's the window, throw them out. Yeah, and so, so we, true. you know, this time we want to do a day of character meets. We want to do a day where we reach, have shows, you know, that kind of thing. And I think sometimes yeah. if you have like a lunch book, which we, you know, like out of the the five nights, five nights, six days we're there. I think we've got lunch book like three times, three or four yeah. times. So that makes it a bit harder because some of the shows then finish at like, yeah, say, exactly. four yeah. o'clock, you know, so that could be a bit of a. But sometimes you just get wrapped up on uh, because yep. the parades are definitely one of my favorite things in Disneyland Paris. Yep. Um, I think that Dream and Shine Brighter was such an iconic so good. pop. And uh, yep. it's just one that I've yet to hear somebody say something bad about. 100%. To which whenever whenever we first went in in January, the Christmas parade was finishing. So we got to start with that. And e- whenever we ended our Whenever we were leaving the parks, Dream and Shine Brighter was playing. And that was yeah. just a perfect way. Yeah. You know, like a million splashes of colour. I didn't know how to take. I thought that yeah. this isn't going to be as good. But it's one of those ones now. I even sent Peter a thing through YouTube of, if you have an iPhone, how to make a ringtone of a certain song. Yes. So Karen's Amazing. ringtone is now a million splashes of colour. Um, so and fun. Peter's is now ready for the ride. So, um, But yeah, there's so many different... Um, yeah. e- every time you're there, there's something different on, and I think that I think as much as I love Dream and Shine Brighter, I think we had better views with a million splashes of color, yeah. that, and that was big thanks to you and Peter as well. You know, that was the first time that I'd ever followed the parade going down. That was the first oh, time that not. I actually stood at the end wherever yep. you guys were. Um, that was the first time I stood in the middle. Um, yep. as well, you know, like yeah, so standing in that hub. In front yeah. of the console, it's, it's like that because the first time I ever saw Dream and Shine Brighter, I bought it on Main Street and I was just expecting it to be like a normal Disney parade. And I was like, oh, this is fun. I had no idea there was a show in the hub. So mm-hmm. then later that day, I was like, oh my gosh, I've missed out. And the fact that you get like a 15 minute show, um, yeah, with a million splashes of color as well, 
it's so good and like all of those stages you get different characters so it's nice that every time you see the parade like you say you can stand at the four different stages in the hub yeah you can stand at the end like there's so many different ways to watch it which i think is amazing yeah um whenever we were there for the frozen one uh we stood at where the castle is we stood there and saw the floats go past and then moved across to where one of the podiums was and yeah. karen was wearing some frozen ears she had made and anna Amazing. towards the end was like pointed to her ears and then did a heart thing and because karen was in bits like the tear she had sunglasses on but you could see the tears were streaming down her face because oh, there are certain songs in that that really again yeah. that really trigger her um in a good way not in a bad way yeah um but that's that's just the part of disney music and you know marvel music and star wars music you know um the amount of times you hear the blooming ant-man theme walking around yeah. avengers <laughs> campus it's yes. it's crazy um but yeah there's so many different activities to keep you busy and even if you've seen so the parade true. once you could see it again from a different angle and have a different yep. tag of perspective your favorite character could be there you know yep. like instead of you know, like, because that's the first time anyone's probably seen Maribel or Asha. Yep. And then, you know, like, so at Christmas time, we've only seen the parade coming down. We haven't seen the bit in the middle. So yep. that's going to be fun to see that. that so fantastic. at least at least now they've done like lines, whereas before they never did that. With Dream and Shine Friday, we stood somewhere and they went, yeah, you're OK to stand there. And then somebody, oh, you can't stand there. We're, we're told, yeah. no, you can't oh, stand there. Man. So it's yeah. nice that they have like where you exactly, can stand floor, because perfect. somebody was set, somebody was set, somebody was standing somewhere and I went, stand there because you're going to get a better ask. You're going to see them come up and round. And I went, OK, so later on, after they finished, went, thanks for that, by the way. And I was like, I yeah, love problem. That. you know, perfect. so so but yeah, I even like trying to get Peter's attention I'm behind you and you see you see the bright ears in Peter's head and he's going yeah. don't know I'd like look to your left your left your yeah. left and then he eventually <laughs> turned out and went oh, oh so yes. it's like right. I love you it know, so so <laughs> but yeah you can just like I say the parades for us are more important than the shows um yeah. but we will get to what hopefully whenever we're there the like some of the shows like together Mickey yep. Magician are oh, on because it. yeah it's it seems to be more in the studios park seems to be yep. more in, in the Disneyland park you have the praise and then there you have the shows which yep. you know kind exactly. of That's equivalents so out yeah because like you say in Walt Disney Studios Parks no parades but you've got five shows in Walt Disney Studios Park whereas Disneyland Park you've got the two parades but you've only got one show so it's nice that there's a nice mix and something I think is a really good tip is that when you're in Disney it's so exciting and you go full out all the time but the problem is it's very tiring on your body <laughs> so like yeah. I had massive problems with my feet and um stuff like that but what I would say is going to see a show or having a sit down meal for lunch is a really great way to have a break and give your body a rest especially because what something I really like in Disneyland Paris is that the restaurants if you have a table service they don't rush you like in France it's mm-hmm. very much like enjoy your meal they're not like okay you've got like an hour an hour and a half yeah. to get yeah. out. Mm-hmm. they let you enjoy like so you can really really just give your entire body that little break that it will absolutely need and like mm-hmm. the shows are about 30 minutes long and they are broadway level productions oh like, yeah. yeah not like oh i mean a theme park it'll just be a fun little thing they go full out and i can't wait to hear what you think of together and mickey and the magician because they are two of my favorite shows i've seen any disney park in the world like they are incredible mm-hmm. but that's the thing is like never be afraid to go right okay you know, I've said to Karen, like what we were doing is we were going all day, having yeah. our lunch and carrying on in the parks. So by the time five or six o'clock came, we were done. Yeah. You know, we were knackered. So now it's a case of, right, what we'll do is we'll have our lunch. Once we've had our lunch, we will then walk back and sleep it off for a bit and yep. then come back 100%. in the evening and spend yep. more time in the evening. There's no, again, there's no right or way, wrong way yep. to do it, but you have to look at it. The more you kind of do it and you're there from, park opening to park close i don't know how you do that a no, and i don't know so i true. could not do that five or six days in a row no but absolutely. you know because i work in retail i'm doing 15 17 000 steps so i'm mm. all right whereas karen works in an office so because she's sitting down all the time yes, yeah. she's not you know like said course, during, yeah. for, you know like so it's it, it can be quite tiresome and yeah. the last thing you want is the last day you're like you're like a yeah, zombie you're like, it. It. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. so i always like, say that to people like when you like everyone wants to go park over to park close but it's it's really i think you forget how long the parks are open and it's so yeah 
hard and i'm 100 percent like you what i will tend to do is go 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 and then in the afternoon have a break so it might be having a nap in the room when i went with my friends we used to go to the royal pub in disney village and we would hang out there for like a couple of hours and then go back to the room like charge our phones and then in the evening go back and then like you say in the evenings you're enjoying it so much more because yeah you've got more energy you're just rested and i think the thing that's great is the parks are very different at night when everything's lit up it's like a whole mm-hmm. different experience so what you don't want to do is go 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 from early in the morning and then like you say by four or five o'clock you're dead and then you miss out on ever going in the evening so if you could take those afternoon breaks and ironically it feels counterproductive to leave the parks but you will actually get more done if you do that yeah. and don't forget your hotels if you're staying at newport bay or a hotel yeah. in new york or disneyland hotel you've got swimming pools you've got jacuzzis yeah. you've got you know gyms there you know yeah. like you've got other ways to relax rather than sitting in your room you know exactly. like so you, whether it's go back and you've got like your your tablet and you've you need to catch up on today's eastenders yeah karen <laughs> um so you know that. like you have you have that aspect because all the hotels give you free wi-fi which i yeah. think is really great it's not like a premier inn and you're paying a yeah, fiver for true. 24 hours you know yeah, so yeah that's always good you know go back have a bath, have a shower. You know, I've said to Karen, whenever we are going there on the Sunday, we have Table de Lumiere book for a quarter past six. I said, whenever we get into the hotel, it'll be three o'clock. We will then get ourselves unpacked, get ourselves changed. We don't want to be running from there into the park. And then that yeah. way we can do that and then go into the park for a bit after that. Nice. And then if you yeah. want to stay for the fireworks, you can do. Yep. Whereas I'll just go back to the hotel then and then yes. maybe go yep. down for a drink and wait for you there. You know, no, so perfect. it's just it's just planning stuff. Yeah. You know, like and, and I think it all structures around for us it structures around our food. You know, 100%, what, what yeah. you know, like whether you have like an early morning with the character with Princess Breakfast, we have the early slot, which means empty castle photos, which we were lucky to do the last yeah. time. Uh, and that's the case with this one here as well. We have yep. that as well, which is going to be lovely. And again, it's a case of going from there to our lunch and then having a lunch and then going back to the hotel for a bit, yep. you know, yes. and then just making sure we can then enjoy the evening. Because uh, I've said to Karen, I want to see the Christmas parade all lit up in the evening yes, because that yeah. just looks, it looks yes. so lovely. You know, like it just the way it's done. And I've yet to see a parade at, th- at night. So it'd be yep. nice to see that as well, you know. Yes, exactly. And I think that's what's something that's actually really nice about Disneyland Paris is there's definitely way less planning than somewhere like Disney World. Like you say, the thing you really need to plan is your dining. And the sooner you get that book, the better, because yeah. like you say, they sell out very quickly. And they don't really do walk-ups in Disneyland Paris. Like if it's if you don't get a reservation, there's well, very unlikely you could walk up and they would say, come back in an hour. Most of the time, yeah. there's no option. But it's it's nice because where the both the parks are right next door to each other the hotels are all really close like the longest walk even from like the santa fe it's like a 15 minute walk or mm-hmm. you have the buses which take a few minutes disney village is right next door like everything's so close that you don't need to like plan out massively your day you can just kind of go with yeah. you and see what you want to do but like you said the one thing you need to plan is the dining because otherwise that's going to trip you up if there's somewhere you really really want to eat yeah, if there's somewhere you want to eat, you're better getting this in. The, the thing is, is that if you have it booked, you can then cancel it and let somebody 100%. else get that. Whereas yeah. you're better doing it that way rather than not, yes. not not booking it and then wanting it and not being able to get it. So, yeah, I always say that because you're 100% right. Like, it's so hard. The closer you get, the um, harder it is to book. And it's interesting because, like you say, if you stay on site, you've got up to a year in advance mm-hmm. to book. Whereas people staying off site, they can only book 60 days in advance. So you have such a massive advantage if you stay on site when yeah. it comes to the dining. So you might as well use it. And, like you say, if like you book it in a month or two later, you think, actually, we're going to go eat somewhere else, you can switch it and open that reservation up for someone else. Mm-hmm. Another thing is, is that a friend of mine was going and he was unable to get a Pim's Kitchen booking. And because I had a booking, I was able to then book one a couple of months before I went and yeah. I was able to look and book one for him. I went, here it is. It's under the, it's under my surname. And he was able to get that, which is yes. you know, like, it's just luck of the draw sometimes. Yep. You know, whenever we had our table de Lumiere booked for the Sunday, we originally had it booked for half eight in the evening. Right. And I can't like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, but whenever I phoned up about the princess breakfast, I went, I'm just going to look. And then there was one at six and one at quarter past six. And I went, I'll go for that one instead. Oh, and because it'll actually say, 
oops, you've already got something booked, you can then just go like, you yep. know, confirm booking and it'll automatically cancel your other one for you, which yes. is a nice thing that they do. Um, yep. But yeah, it, it's just, it's nice to play around and then go like, right, we've got this book for lunch. What are we doing for dinner or a sandwich? We've got this book for dinner. What are we doing for lunch? Um, yes. Cause we love that Karen loves the pizza and Bella Notte. And I was like, well, we haven't been to Colonel Hades and they yep. do the same pizza and she loves the garlic bread. I'm not a garlic bread fan, but she yeah. adores the garlic bread. And I'm like, well, why don't we go there? Because then that's another restaurant we've never yep. eaten in before. And yes. it's kind of then because Bella Notte is as love, much as a lovely place. It's very, very busy. You know, because yes. then you're standing so there with true, a tray yeah. going, where, where do yeah. I sit? You yeah. know, like you're, you're like the, the lost kid at a canteen. <laughs> you know, we don't know where to sit. Whereas yep. currently here, he seems to have like a mass and seems a lot quieter as well. Well, that's recently changed its menu. So that's now an Indian restaurant. So it's a, still a quick service, but it's stuff like curries and stuff. So it's moved to a different menu now, which is interesting. As but... long as it still has a normal pizza, then we're fine. No, I pizza. Know... no pizza. Oh, no, no pizza. way. The, well, whole me- what... the whole menu's gone. So you can still get it in Bella Notte, but I yeah. know lots of people did like the pizza there, which is a shame. Yeah. Because I heard a lot of people saying that the pepperoni pizza was like the best pizza yes. on site, you know, whereas we're like, yes. right, so what that means, uh, I need to report back to Karen, so we have yes. to go there then instead of there. Yes. I thought they just added that. And it, no, you know, like no, with... they completely changed the menu. And I think it makes sense because it fits that land. And look, yeah. when, it was quite similar to Bella Notte, but I'm like, maybe because the, like you said, the pepperoni pizza and stuff was so popular, they should add it to Bella Notte. And like, yeah. because you, like, don't get rid of something people love. <laughs> Just maybe exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, especially if it's if pizza for kids, you know, like I'm not really going to go as much as I like curry. I would think I really fancy trying a curry pizza, especially when I'm on holiday, you know. Yeah. But well, there's no pizza at all. The pi- oh, no pizza, not even oh, I thought there was it's like, like a... curries and stuff like that. Oh, right, okay. Okay. Yes, okay. Yeah. So I think I, I'm really excited actually to try that because I love the, whenever there's a new option i'm like oh let's go and um but i think yeah because it, a lot of the dishes there were so loved i think a lot of people are like oh no because i liked the old menu but i'm very mm-hmm. excited to see that completely new and i know like places like lunch chance cafe have like completely changed their menu as well and like um it's interesting when there's a menu update and you're like oh what do i try now but it's annoying yeah to get rid of something you liked which is yeah i think i think though i think though if you go a lot of things don't seem to change that much in the village. Yeah. It always seems to be, and that's always seem to have yeah. the kind of same stuff. The sports bar always seems to have the yeah. same stuff. So if you're struggling in the park itself and the village, you should be able to find something like your yes. McDonald's will always have your chicken nuggets. They're not going to make it curry chicken nuggets, probably. Yes, yeah, uh, so don't true. Do that. <laughs> you know, that so, so you, true. You, there's always something there. I think. Yep. Cafe Hyperion, as much as we used to like their burgers there, they've changed their chicken burgers and they're a lot more, like we find it really crunchy, whereas before it was more like a Chicken Royale from Burger King. It was more yeah. that. So um, Karen doesn't like like really crunchy food. And she was sitting there picking at the burger because it was quite bad that right. way. Yes. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, but uh, like so many things change now and it's nice that they tell you but with the likes of victoria's is always a place we like to eat in but it's one of those ones that has the most oddest opening hours like yeah it was meant to open at what 11 o'clock we went at 12 o'clock and it was still closed and it's like what is going on yes yeah exactly it's crazy but i think what's been great through our chat is it's kind of that thing of Adults could do everything at Disneyland Paris. Don't be put off. Don't think there are things you have to miss out on. You could do absolutely everything, whether it be a ride, whether it's meeting a character. But if you're looking for some things that are more adult, you've got places like Manhattan Restaurant, which is really sophisticated, a bit more upscale, like somewhere like Table of the Lumiere. Like that food's going to be higher quality, but also it's character dining and you're saving Mm -hmm. all that time. But if you're wanting to also like enhance your experience, take those breaks, <laughs> whether that be in the park with the show or in a bar or at your hotel, swimming, like you say, all of those things. And just, yeah, don't miss out on anything. Like Walt Disney literally made the Disney parks for everyone. And mm-hmm. there's no place that I've ever been where I felt uncomfortable that I shouldn't have been there or that yeah. this is too, it feels too childish. It feels yeah. too kiddy. Like I feel like... If you're an adult going to Disneyland Paris, you are going to be able to live all your childhood dreams and you're just going to have the best time. And there are things you can do that are more adult. Like we said, the certain restaurants, bars, certain hotels that are a bit more adult. But 
you know, matter which way you visit, you're going to have the best time. So something I wanted to end on, Chris, is what do you think keeps bringing you back to Disneyland Paris? Oh, well, it wouldn't be the lack of shops anyway, because there's shopping, <laughs> there's places yes. everywhere. No matter where you walk, there's a shop. Um, yes. I think it's the just shopping. the... I think it's just the fact that every time you go, there's something different for you to do. You're never bored. It's not a case of you. Remember, it's your holiday. You may have people going, you may have the people going like, oh, you're going back to Disney again. I never say to people, oh, you go back to Benidorm again. Going like, oh, you must really like that to go back there again, you know. Um, But yeah, it's your holiday. So enjoy it to the most. And that's what we do is that it's easy to get to. It's not uh it's not too hot it's not you know like it's it's the right kind of temperature it's a friendly place to be in there's nobody it's like going to con- a convention you're going to have people there who love the same kind of stuff that you do yep. and everyone is there to enjoy themselves and have a good time and that includes the staff they're there to make sure that you have the best experience you know whether it's in a show or whether it's you know like people uh, like in the restaurants where it's people actually just going around picking up the litter making it one of the cleanest places you've ever been to in your life because i've yet to go like oh there's a bit of dirt here or whatever you know but it's somewhere that you can just forget your troubles enjoy yourself enjoy the people you're with and then it's it's talking to other people like we are now um and it's talking to others about your love of whether it be disney marvel star wars whether whether you just love snow white and are going there just to see the snow white ride and meet her at the princess breakfast or princess lunch uh whether it's a case of you love mickey mouse you know like everyone has their favorite characters yeah everyone loves to dress up different that's why i love doing the shirts you know i there's like a nice little combo that Karen and I have for whenever we go to we have Pim's kitchen put and going to do Spider-Man meet so we have a like a nice little yes. outfit there planned oh, for it that. so but it's doing that I adore the planning and Karen yeah. is um always very um gracious and let me plan the stuff obviously I'll say to her oh do you want to do this do you want to yep. do x y z but I'm the one who actually does it and books the holiday but it's yeah. the fun leading up to it and yep. get, once you get there it's just it's it's magical and you know like and that's the thing is that he is well created this like you say for everyone and you can be whether you're a newborn baby whether you're this is your last trip you're ever going to do is go to disneyland no matter where it is you know uh, one of my best friends he's going to walt disney world with his parents his parents said this is going to be the last time and they've said that twice now yeah they're going again (laughs) you know so So it's for all ages. Everyone has a certain, if I was to say to somebody in the street, what's your favorite Disney movie? They'll know a Disney movie yeah. straight away, you know, yeah. and that's the thing is that for me, it's just being part of something and just enjoying myself and meeting like-minded people like yourself or on Instagram. Yeah. There's so many people, you know, like I created a kind like last year sometime and I have like over a thousand followers and, yeah. you know, you have so many exciting things with you with your love of Disney and it's just nice that people channel it in different ways and for me Disney will always be a part of my life and with Karen it's an even bigger part and going there with somebody magical makes it more magical as corny as that sounds. That's so true and I think you hit the nail on the head that one kind of you could go a million times and you will never get bored there's always something to do always something new that you haven't experienced before and like you say making memories with people and particularly being in an environment where everyone has the same interest and love Mm -hmm. it it just brings something to it that you don't get other places like I literally think you can feel the magic in the air but there is something special about it which is so good so I do hope anyone that is thinking about taking an adult trip to Disneyland Paris takes the leap because you absolutely will not regret it it is so wonderful and the, like you said the fact that it's so close to us you can get fantastic deals you can visit kind of any time of year like yes in the winter it can be cold and in the summer it can be hot if you prepare you're absolutely fine <laughs> and mm-hmm. i'm 100 like you like the planning i think builds the excitement when you get to think yeah. about we're going to dine what are we going to go on what shows might we see like it gets you so excited and that like, i love planning any trips like if i go to Berlin we went to last year I loved planning that out but Disney it's just an extra level of excitement 
the plug. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and yeah. I love that we both share that passion. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. It's been absolutely amazing. It was great to talk to you, Chris. I had the best time. Yes, me too. Thank you very much for sending the invitation. Anytime I get to chat to you and see your smiley face always uh, makes my day. Um, and just best of luck with the podcast. I've been enjoying listening to it. I'm more a listener than I am a viewer. Um, I, I don't know why I've always been that way. I think it's whenever I started my podcast way back when was way before YouTube kind of exploded. But yes. uh, the best of luck with it all. And I look Thank forward so to future much. episodes. Yes, well, thank you for listening to the podcast, guys. And like Chris mentioned, you can also watch it on YouTube. So you can actually see our faces as we chat. I also have YouTube videos all about planning your Disney trips. And you can also check out my website where I help you plan your own trips to the Disney parks. So there's so much more to come this year. I'm very excited. But it's been absolutely wonderful to chat and visiting with, like, friends solo as a couple, like, adult trips. Now, I think I enjoy my adult trips more than even when I visited as a child. So I'm just like getting to chat about this with someone else that also gets it <laughs> it's amazing whenever they show up let me know will you yeah exactly <laughs> it's perfect. But thank you so much Chris thank you Sophie and until next time I hope you have a most magical day bye bye <laughs>